Hello and welcome back to the Immortal News Family. In today's heartfelt video, we bring to you the latest updates on the passing of some truly remarkable individuals within the last 24 hours. As a part of the Immortal News Family, we are committed to honoring and remembering those who have made a lasting impact in our lives and the world. If this video touches your heart, or if the stories of these extraordinary people have moved you, please show your respect and remembrance by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Number 8. Herbert Cowboy Coward, best known for his famous portrayal of the threatening toothless man in the classic film Deliverance, died suddenly in a car accident at age 85. Herbert's performance in Deliverance made a lasting impression on the film's legacy, particularly his terrifying statement, he got a real pretty mouth, ain't he? His ability to give such a haunting performance demonstrated his raw, genuine talent. He was born on August 21, 1938 in Haywood County, North Carolina. His early life was difficult. After his mother died, he dropped out of school and was hardly literate, yet he found success in acting. His introduction to the world of film was as distinctive as his character in Deliverance. He first encountered Burt Reynolds at the Ghost Town in the Sky Amusement Park, where he worked and demonstrated his stunt skills and stage gunfights. His role in Deliverance stemmed from his acquaintance with Reynolds. His performance of The Toothless Man is remarkable for its raw intensity and has gone down in film history. Despite his lack of professional acting instruction, Cowboy's performance was profoundly moving, demonstrating his natural aptitude. Aside from his cinematic career, he was well known for his job at Ghost Town Amusement Park, where he did risky stunts and amused thousands of visitors. His distinctive appearance, particularly his toothless grin, which he developed after being struck by a firearm during a staged gunfight, became his trademark. He returned to Haywood County in his senior years and lived a quiet life. He was a mountain man whole and through, and his impact goes beyond deliverance. Burt Reynolds recalled him as one of his great buddies, demonstrating Cowboy's actual off-screen personality. His life story, from the harsh hills of North Carolina to the screens of Hollywood, is a fascinating tale of perseverance and natural skill. His portrayal in Deliverance will be recognized as one of the most haunting in cinematic history. Tribute to Herbert Cowboy Coward. Number 7. Orla Baxendale, a young and talented professional dancer, passed away tragically at the age of 25. Her untimely death, caused by a severe allergic reaction to mislabeled cookies, has left a vacuum in the hearts of all who knew and respected her love of dancing. Her commitment and talent earned her a scholarship to the famed Ailey School in 2018. Her trip from the UK to New York City demonstrated her perseverance and dedication to her trade. Her performances at New York Fashion Week and several dance shows at Lincoln Center demonstrated her great talent and provided joy to many people. She was a gifted dancer who captivated audiences with her beautiful moves and emotive performances. The revelation that she died as a result of an erroneously labeled food product serves as a sobering reminder of the need for appropriate labeling, particularly for people with severe food allergies. Her death has generated a crucial discussion about food safety and labeling requirements, underlining the importance of awareness and care in food production and packing. Her life, despite being cut short, was a voyage of inspiration, fortitude, and pursuit of ambitions. She will be remembered for her dazzling energy, dedication to her work, and the impression she made on all who saw her perform. Her legacy will continue to encourage young dancers and remind everyone of the significance of pursuing one's passion wholeheartedly. Tribute to Orla Baxendale. Number 6. Noza Teixeira, a talented actress noted for her memorable performances in theater, television, and film, died at the age of 44. Teixeira, born on December 6, 1979 in Lisbon, 
began her artistic career with a dazzling debut in Joao Botello's film Traffic in 1998. Her career took off as she showcased her incredible talent on a variety of platforms. Her flexibility as an actress was reflected in her various roles. She starred in Joao Botello's The Woman Who Believed She Was President of the USA, and later in Pre-Ordered and Fragile, directed by Artur Serra Araujo and Martin Valente, respectively. Her performances in Juan Canijo's Blood of My Blood and Oswaldo Caldera's Alice Stories solidified her reputation as a captivating film personality. Her influence expanded to television, where she appeared in programs such as Family's Doctor and You're Not a Man, You're Nothing, as well as popular soap operas like Greed and Wild Angel. Her ability shone through in television films such as Lost Love and A Dream Deferred, her stage debut in Jorge M. Fraga's Romeo and Juliet, from the fatal entrails and under the grim star, demonstrated her acting abilities. She continues to collaborate with great filmmakers such as Joaquin Benite and Jose Martins, adding depth and authenticity to each character. She was an excellent academic with degrees in public relations and business communication, in addition to her acting career. She perfected her craft at the Escola Superior de Teatro e Cinema, becoming a source of inspiration for young performers. As a voiceover artist and teacher, she fostered her love of the performing arts by generously sharing her knowledge and experience. Her impact on the performing arts is enormous. She began her career as a model and has since blossomed into a versatile artist who has touched people's lives on and off stage and television. Her departure leaves a vacuum in the hearts of those who valued her work, but her contributions to the arts will live on and inspire. Tribute to Nuza Teixeira. Number 5. Tom Priestley, a notable film editor and the son of the famed playwright and novelist J.B. Priestley, died at the age of 91. His journey into the arts saw him thrive in film editing, where he not only discovered his calling, but also made a lasting imprint. Priestley earned a BAFTA for his work on Morgan, a suitable case for treatment, and was nominated for an Academy Award for editing John Borman's thriller, Deliverance. His expert editing talents added greatly to the tension and discomfort that Deliverance is famed for, particularly in its most tense passages. He was the only son of J.B. Priestley, was born in London and grew up in an environment steeped in intellectual and creative excellence. He grew up in a creative environment which likely affected his professional decision. His editing philosophy stressed the continuity of emotion, which distinguished him in the film industry. His contributions to cinema are many, having worked on films such as Mara Sadi, The Great Gatsby, The Return of the Pink Panther, and Tess by Roman Polanski. His works with filmmaker Michael Radford on films such as Another Time, Another Place, and 1,984 Inches demonstrate his range and talent. His impact went beyond his professional accomplishments. He was highly committed to promoting and safeguarding his father, J.B. Priestley's legacy. He made a documentary on his father, and actively managed his estate, ensuring that his father's work was honored and remembered. He led an artistically and creatively rich life, with a distinct sense of style and a bold personal expression. He negotiated his professional and personal lives with grace, making substantial contributions to the film business while honoring his father's legacy. Tribute to Tom Priestley. Number 4. John Pilger, a courageous and uncompromising journalist, filmmaker, and novelist, died at the age of 84 from pulmonary fibrosis. Pilger used his pen and camera for more than 50 years to give voice to the unheard and confront the strong. His journalism was distinguished by a deep commitment to unearthing the truth and exposing the consequences of acts, notably those of the United States and the United Kingdom in international affairs. His breakthrough work includes a 1979 report on Cambodia 
following the demise of Pol Pot's regime. His vivid and horrifying portrayal of the genocide and its aftermath drew international attention to the problem, resulting in major aid for the Cambodian people. His documentary, Year Zero, The Silent Death of Cambodia, is known for its compelling storytelling and humanitarian impact. Throughout his career, he has continually challenged popular narratives. His 1970 documentary, The Quiet Mutiny, exposed the decreasing morale of U.S. troops in Vietnam, establishing a pattern for his critical and investigative approach. His work was not without controversy, but it was always motivated by an unwavering search of truth. His documentaries on a variety of themes, from the plight of indigenous Australians to the worldwide consequences of U.S. foreign policy, were notable for their depth and incisiveness. He was an outspoken opponent of the media's role in spreading misinformation and propaganda, especially during times of war and strife. His effect went beyond journalism. Pilger was a human rights activist and a supporter of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. His numerous honors, including an Emmy and the British Press Honors Journalist of the Year, demonstrate his major contributions to journalism. His legacy is that of a journalist who dared to question the current quo, shedding light on the dark side of power and politics. His work serves as a strong reminder of journalism's important role in holding the privileged accountable and providing a voice for the oppressed. Tribute to John Pilger. Number 3. Kelly Malvo, a former star cornerback for the University of Arizona and a respected figure in the Canadian Football League, died at the age of 47. His unexpected departure has left the sports community in sadness as they reflect on the legacy of a player known for his tremendous talent and passion to the game. Malvo's football career began at Long Beach Polytechnic High School when he demonstrated his extraordinary abilities in the sport. His talent led him to the University of Arizona, where he was a four-year starter under coach Dick Tomey. In 1995, he was named to the All-Pac-10 second team because of his exceptional footwork and defensive abilities. Malvo, known for his steadiness and resilience, started 39 games in his final three seasons, making a lasting mark on the Wildcat football program. Aside from his sports accomplishments, he was equally committed to his academic studies graduating with a degree in psychology and a minor in African-American studies. His dedication to both academics and sports represented the real ethos of a student athlete. Following college, his professional career took him to the World Football League, where he played for the Amsterdam Admirals. His professional football career continued in the CFL, where he rose to prominence, particularly when playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers from 2006 to 2009. He was remembered by his colleagues not only for his ability on the game, but also for his character off the field, as a terrific teammate and family man. His influence on those around him was tremendous, and his legacy goes far beyond football. His death is a tremendous loss for the football community. His passion to the sport, as well as the impact he made on his teammates and fans, will be remembered. His life, both on and off the field, is an example to young sportsmen and those who knew him. Tribute to Kelly Malvo. Number two, Roger Donlan a famous United States Army officer and the first person to be awarded the Medal of Honor during the Vietnam War, died on January 25, 2024, just short of his 90th birthday. His reputation as a fearless leader and trailblazer in the United States Army Special Forces is an everlasting tribute to his incredible bravery and devotion to his nation. He was born on January 30, 1934, in Saugerties, New York. His military career began in the United States Air Force in 1953, and after a brief stint at West Point, he re-enlisted in the Army in 1958. 
His dedication to education was clear when he received his bachelor's degree from the University of Nebraska at Omaha in 1967, displaying his confidence in the power of information as well as military skill. His outstanding courage was most prominently demonstrated in July 1964 at the Battle of Nam Dong. As captain, he led his team against the Viet Cong's powerful two-battalion offensive, demonstrating leadership, strategic thinking, and bravery. His actions not only saved numerous lives, but also earned him the renowned Medal of Honor, setting a high example for future soldiers. Aside from his military successes, he was a writer who wrote novels about his experiences in the Vietnam War, including Outpost of Freedom and Beyond Nam Dong. These publications provided important insights into the conflict and the sacrifices made by those who fought. His life was dedicated to duty, not just in the military, but also as an inspiration to many. Among the many honors bestowed upon him were the key to the city of Lexington, Kentucky, and the American Academy of Achievement's Golden Plate Award. His death concludes a tremendous life committed to service, leadership, and patriotism. His narrative continues to inspire future generations of servicemen and women, reminding them of the courage and dedication required to serve their country. Tribute to Roger Donlin. Today's top headlines. News 1. Adult film actress Jessie Jane, known for her significant impact in the industry, passed away at 43 under tragic circumstances. Jane, who gained fame in the early 2000s, was found alongside her boyfriend Brett Hazenmuller in Moore, Oklahoma. The welfare check that led to the discovery was initiated by Hazenmuller's concerned employer. Her career in adult entertainment began with Digital Playground in 2002. She quickly rose to prominence, featuring in high-profile adult films, including the Pirate series. Her work extended beyond adult films to hosting roles on Playboy TV's Night Calls and Naughty Amateur Home Videos. She also made appearances in mainstream media, contributing to various shows and documentaries, highlighting her life beyond the adult film industry. Beyond her on-screen achievements, Jane was a prominent figure at industry events, hosting the AVN Awards multiple times and launching successful lines. Her versatility and influence in the industry were undeniable. News 2. During a tense Sunday night NFL game, Buffalo Bills running back Damian Harris was urgently transported from the field by ambulance following a concerning incident. Harris, tackled after a reception from quarterback Josh Allen, remained on the ground, prompting immediate medical attention. The game against the New York Giants paused as team staff and medical personnel rushed onto the field. In a distressing scene, Harris was carefully secured onto a stretcher and lifted into an ambulance, which swiftly exited the stadium. The incident, occurring just before the end of the second quarter with the Giants leading 6-0, left teammates and fans anxious. Notably, Damar Hamlin, Harris's teammate who experienced a severe on-field medical emergency earlier in the year, was visibly distraught on the sidelines. News 3 in a startling turn of events, beloved comedian and former EastEnders actor Bobby Davro experienced a serious health scare during a recent comedy performance. Davro, 65, was immediately attended to after he collapsed just moments after leaving the stage at the Coolsdon Comedy Club in South London. Davro, renowned for his humor and acting prowess, had just finished his act to a standing ovation before suffering what he described as a funny turn. This incident follows a period of personal challenges for the entertainer, particularly following the passing of his late fiancée Vicky Wright in May last year. Wright, the daughter of the late footballer Billy Wright, had been battling pancreatic cancer. The situation has led to the cancellation of Davro's upcoming appearances as he focuses on his recovery. The sudden health episode has raised concerns among fans and fellow artists highlighting the unpredictable nature of health issues, even among seasoned performers like Davro. News 4. Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, was recently photographed leaving King Edward's Hospital in London after revealing her malignant melanoma diagnosis. The 64-year-old, 
who also underwent breast cancer surgery last year, has expressed gratitude for the support and care she's received. On Instagram, Ferguson highlighted the importance of early detection in skin cancer and thanked her medical team for their timely intervention. She has been recuperating at the Mayer Life Clinic in Austria and is now resting at home with her family. This health update comes amid other royal family members facing health challenges, including the Princess of Wales's surgery and King Charles's upcoming hospital treatment. Despite these difficulties, the royal family remains engaged in their responsibilities. Ferguson, in particular, continues her work as an author and maintains close ties with her family. Her recent appearance is a sign of her resilience and the effective medical care she's receiving. Ferguson's experience underscores the significance of health awareness and the impact of supportive networks in overcoming health obstacles. News 5 Larry Thompson, a cherished radio personality from the Twin Cities, passed away due to complications from multiple sclerosis. Moon, a vital part of KS95's Moon and Stacy show, retired in 2019 to focus on his health after being diagnosed with MS in 2005. His dedication to radio was recognized with his induction into the Minnesota Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 2021. His career, spanning 45 years, included stints in Nebraska, Las Vegas, Houston, and notably in the Twin Cities. KS95 is commemorating his legacy on air and encourages listeners to share their memories using the hashtag Remembering Moon. His co-host, Hutch, expressed heartbreak over Moon's death, highlighting his legendary status in the broadcasting community. Number 1. Carl Andre, an influential American minimalist artist known for his ordered linear and grid format sculptures, passed away at the age of 88 in Manhattan. His legacy in the art world is marked by a distinctive approach that redefined the essence of minimalist sculpture. Born on September 16, 1935, in Quincy, Massachusetts, his artistic journey began at Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts. His education there laid the foundation for his future contributions to the art world. His time in New York City, where he moved in 1956, was crucial in shaping his minimalist aesthetic. His interactions with prominent artists of the time, including his reacquaintance with former classmate Frank Stella, played a significant role in his development as an artist. His work is widely recognized for its simplicity and use of everyday materials. His sculptures, varying from large public artworks like Stonefield Sculpture in Hartford, Connecticut, to smaller, more intimate pieces, demonstrated his ability to transform common materials into significant artistic expressions. His pieces such as 144 Magnesium Square and 7 Alnico Pole are celebrated for their minimalistic beauty and the way they invite viewers to engage with space and form. Beyond his physical creations, his influence extended to his approach to sculpture and his contributions to the minimalist movement. He challenged traditional perceptions of art and sculpture, encouraging a deeper appreciation for the interaction between space, material, and viewer. His artistic philosophy and creations continue to inspire and influence artists and art enthusiasts alike. His passing marks the end of an era in minimalist art, but his legacy continues to resonate in galleries, public spaces, and the minds of those who appreciate the power of simplicity in art. Tribute to Carl Andre, 1935-1938.